Hi, this is Ryan Brown from mockquestions.com. In this video, we'll discuss five software developer interview questions from our website. We'll go over each question and some advice on how to answer them, along with an answer example. Afterwards, if you found this video helpful, please like and share. That would mean a lot to us. Okay, let's get started. Question number one. What are some of the types of development projects you have worked on in your past positions? Organizations prefer to hire candidates who have direct experience with the type of work they do. An interviewer will ask this question to determine if you've recently done the type of work they want to hire you for. During an interview, all your answers should address the needs of the employer. It would be best to discover these during your pre-interview research about the company, its products, and practices. You can find the information you need in the job posting and on the company's website. Here's our answer example. In my last two roles, I was focused on improving applications which manage transactions and interact with the relational database systems. My role in the application development was developing all the code to control data queries, lookups, and indexing of the data. I worked with other programmers to design the interface, manage the backend database, and develop other application features. The companies I worked for were focused on e-commerce, conducting sales and other transactions via their websites. Question number two. Can you describe a challenging software development project you recently completed and the results? Ideally, you have encountered some of the same challenges that the organization has during your software developer experience. The interviewer hopes to confirm this. It demonstrates that you will address the challenges and problems they encounter and help them resolve them quickly. Organizations hire people to either fill a vacant role or expand their team. In either case, they expect the candidate to bring a fresh perspective to the organization and skills, experience, and knowledge they currently don't have on their team. Your answer to this and the, all the questions they ask should affirm this. The most challenging software project I've worked on recently involved an application to allow the company's personnel to self-manage their HR benefits. The challenge was that end users had to have their secure access to their own information without the HR staff intervening. This required me to implement several security features, including user authentication, password protection, and the ability for users to access the company's database behind its firewall via VPNs. Recognizing that I did not have recent experience in these technologies, I refresh my skills by taking a short online course and collaborate with some of the other developers on our team on the project. Together, we developed the software on schedule and under budget. I learned to recognize my shortcomings and bring in additional resources when needed. Question number three, what is software scope and what does the process involve? Software scope is a set of activities and actions to be performed as part of, it, of the delivery of a software product. Software scope should be well-defined with phase-by-phase -phase milestones, functionalities, and deliverable components. A question like this will be asked regardless of what experience level you are at in software development. This is a fundamental question that all software developers should know and should know well. Software scope for me is relatively easy because at my current company, I'm involved at every stage of the documentation and project delivery process. It is my responsibility to identify all aspects of the project scope, including but not limited to what the end product will do, what the expected timeline will be, who needs to approve deliverables at every phase, what the goals and tasks will be for assigned team members, how the features will work and their characteristics, and what the estimated cost will be for the final product. As part of my due diligence, I always draft a project scope document that includes items that are not part of the scope of work. This helps eliminate any confusion or miscommunication with the end client. Question number four. Explain how duplicates are removed from an array without using a library. If we look at the core of this question, it has to do with an array, not finding duplicates. The goal here is to remove duplicates from an integer array without using any collection API class libraries. Several levels of interview questions will come up to test your knowledge of basic to complex problem solving solutions. This, this one sits somewhere in the middle of the pack. When an interviewer asks whether or not you need a loop or recursion, depending on your skill level, 
they are asking the order in which elements are inserted in a set. Answering with something like, an array is a static, fixed-length structure that cannot change its length, is probably something that will tell the interviewer that you have a solid understanding of how deleting an array works. Having worked at many levels using arrays and class libraries, this is a pretty straightforward answer. If your input array contains multiple duplicates, this may result in many temporary arrays, some of which may not be needed. With this restriction in mind, I typically figure out how to minimize both memory and hardware of requirements. When I need to delete an array using a more defined descriptive logic, the approach I take here is to find duplicate elements in a given array then run an outer loop to zero to size. As a next step in the process, I run another inner loop to find the first duplicate using another nested loop. To take it further, inside the inner loop, I also check for duplicate elements. If I find one, then I delete the array element. Question number five. What is verification and validation and why is it important? Verification and validation are essential in the software development process. If you can't verify or validate a set of activities to ensure that the software is not implemented correctly, hasn't been built to specification, or is functioning properly, you will surely have problems with your production environment. Interviewers know how important this is and will ask questions about it to ensure that you practice doing your due diligence to ensure the highest quality software development. In my opinion, verification and validation are at the heart of every development project. I take this step very seriously and it shows in my work. This includes all the steps and procedures of validation. Perspective validation is important because it is done to ensure the product is functioning properly. Retrospective validation is done against the written specifications and verifies actual data. Periodic validation is used to repair, relocate, or dismiss data that serves no purpose. Partial validation is mostly used for research but can come in handy for pilot studies. Cross-validation is suitable for estimating the performance of statistical models. Concurrent validation is usually carried out during regular maintenance or service routines in the post-development process. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could like or comment below. Thanks again, and we hope you stick around to watch more interview practice videos from us.